In this class we want to talk about conglomerate diversification. Now conglomerate diversification occurs when a firm diversifies into areas that are unrelated to its current line of business. So it diversifies into areas that are unrelated to its current line of business. Totally different activities perhaps. Synergy may result through the application of management expertise or financial resources, but the primary purpose of conglomerate diversification is improved profitability of the acquiring firm. So it's not driven by a quest for synergy, this looking for efficiency in the use of resources. It's not driven by that. It's it's driven more by a desire for greater profitability. So it's not a, a, a strategy that's aimed at uh, greater efficiency within the organization. It may simply be a strategy of using the resources of the organization, of the business, to acquire a different business and uh, run the, the second business. The second business may be unrelated to the first one. Just run it as, as a business and increase overall profitability from the two businesses in that case. Little if any concern is given to achieving marketing or production synergy with conglomerate diversification. It's not looking for marketing synergy. It's not looking for connections in the market. There may be some that may be fortuitous, but it's not driven by that. It's not, that's not the primary objective. The primary objective is to acquire a business, a second business, and run it and take its profits and add it to the profits from the first business so that overall the conglomerate has got more profit. So it's not looking for, looking for um, production or marketing synergy per se. It's just simply looking to acquire another business. Um, one of the most common reasons for pursuing a conglomerate growth strategy is the opportunities, or are the opportunities, in a firm's uh, current line of business they may be limited. The, 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 the opportunities may be limited in the current business. So it may be forced out to look for another business because there are limited opportunities in the existing one. Perhaps the market is small or uh, it is restricted in some way. It, it can't grow or it, it, it finds it difficult to expand for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps it can't get its hands on raw materials or good quality raw material or um, skilled labour in that area may be in decline. There are all sorts of reasons. So it's looking for new opportunities elsewhere. Sorry, I've just, um, just jumped. Uh, finding an attractive investment opportunity requires the firm to consider alternatives in other types of business. So let's say in its current business it has acquired some some financial resources and it wishes to use the resources for investment opportunities so it goes looking for uh, another business not necessarily related to the first one. That's simply the idea. If you look at big companies like General Electric, uh, they've all done this. They, they have, um, it offers a wide, diverse sort of technology and it also has a credible financial services company. So it, it runs from technology, financial services. Um, it makes a very wide variety of products. Um, engines for aircraft, water processing, uh, power generation, household appliances and so on. Very widespread range of products. 
and clearly the products are not linked, certainly not linked closely. It's conglomerate, it's, it's big and it's diverse and it's present in more than a hundred countries. It has its segments, as I said earlier, related to the products would be aviation, transport, healthcare, financial services, and so on. So it's, it's big, it's conglomerate, and it's diverse. So this is in stark contrast to the concentric diversification that's dealt with in another video. Now, conglomerate diversification. Well, firms may also pursue a um, conglomerate diversification strategy as a means of increasing the firm's growth rate. So that may be one of the primary concerns. Uh, the company wants to grow, so it, it starts a totally different business, or it acquires a totally different business and runs it uh, in this conglomerate sense. Uh, growth in sales may make the company more attractive for investors. Um, well, growth in sales will certainly uh, make investors in the business um, uh, interested. And if a business uh, is conglomerate, i.e. it's got different sections, it may be seen as um, somewhat risk averse. It, it's, it's spreading its risk. If one of the uh, component parts starts to fail, the other one will be there perhaps to pick up any slack. And the growth of the business may increase its power and its prestige. And the executives of the business may enjoy power and prestige as a consequence of that. Uh, so working for a conglomerate may be more appealing than working for a small company uh, producing um, one product or um, a small line of products. Conglomerate growth may be effective if the new area has growth opportunities greater than those available in the existing line of business. Well clearly if a business wishes to expand in this conglomerate sense by acquiring a, a different business, an unrelated business but a different one, it's not going to just acquire any business, it's going to acquire one that has good good growth rate. It's, it's a good investment. It has good investment potential. It will perhaps have good growth, good profit opportunities. Um, it's a sound investment. So it will make the conglomerate more attractive as a consequence. Probably the biggest disadvantage of a conglomerate diversification strategy is the increase in administrative problems associated with running unrelated businesses. By and large it may mean the duplication of administration. It may mean um, two administrations because the businesses are so different. There may also be a third layer of administration which is the conglomerate layer which oversees the two individual businesses. It may be, as in the case of General Electric, there are many businesses underneath, not just two, maybe a large number, each with its separate administration and perhaps one administration above those again to try and coordinate all of the individual businesses. Uh, managers from different divisions may have different backgrounds and may not be able to work together very easily. There may be communications issues across the conglomerate and getting agreements where perhaps co uh, cooperation is possible. Getting those agreements may be difficult. Managers may not willingly wish to cooperate. Competition between strategic business units for resources may entail shifting resources away from one division to another. Well, in
within conglomerates, each part of the conglomerate, each business within the conglomerate, will be fighting for resources. They will be arguing for resources and there will also be resentment if one part of the conglomerate is subsidising the other part. Um, there may be resentment about this. And there could be issues also about remuneration if one part of the conglomerate are being paid more than the other. So there are also issues in, in that context. Uh, as I said, there may be rivalry and administrative problems between different parts of the conglomerate. Caution must be exercised in entering businesses with seemingly promising opportunities, especially if the management team lacks experience or skills in the new lines of business. So even though an investment opportunity becomes available and a the business wishes to acquire a new business and add it to its portfolio uh, doesn't mean that the management have an expertise in running that business. Uh, it may be a highly specialized business so different expertise is required. So even though something becomes available uh, which would look attractive within the corporate portfolio, it doesn't mean it can be acquired. Without some knowledge of the new industry, a firm may be unable to accurately evaluate the industry's potential. So sometimes opportunities may be missed because the management can't properly evaluate opportunities. Or even more da dangerously, it, ca it can't evaluate the threats. It may acquire a business which uh, has many threats and may be under, uh, under corporate attack from rivals. Now it's difficult to assess this. The management would have to have some detailed information about the day-to-day -day running of the business as well as the more corporate issues and the strategies being pursued. If a new business is initially successful, uh, problems will eventually occur. So even if, 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 if it acquires a business and everything goes well at the start, it doesn't mean it will go well forever. There may be issues further down the line and the management will need an expertise to be able to deal with those. So, conglomerate diversification is full of issues and full of problems. Executives from the conglomerate will have to become involved in the operations of the new enterprise at some point. Um, at some stage, the conglomerate executives, the executives that oversee the individual businesses, they may have to become involved because issues arise further down the line. It may be communications issues or it may be problems of effective management or it may be that the business is under threat from rivals or perhaps it's not innovating successfully and customers are turning against its products. Without adequate experience or skills, this is the management synergy that's dealt with more fully under concentric diversification. But without adequate experience or skills, uh, the new business may become a poor performer. So there may be issues about the long run prospects of a business if the management, the corporate management, the conglomerate management does not have the skills to intervene and to control and guide the business. Without some form of strategic fit, the combined performance of the individual units will probably not exceed the performance of the units operating independently. Now that's an important point. If two businesses are within 
uh, conglomerate configuration if they are if they don't fit together at all if there is no advantage if they are totally separate and there's no advantage of them cooperating then the the profit or the advantage flowing from having those two businesses is no more than that could have been had had the businesses been run separately and outside of the conglomerate configuration so it's necessary to look at some sort of fit some sort of economies some sort of sharing which enables the conglomerate diversification process to make sense and to make savings in fact the combined performance may deteriorate because of controls placed on the individual units by the parent conglomerate so if the if the two units are totally separate their combined performance may be actually less because there's an extra layer of management to support an extra layer of intervention more meetings more bureaucracy more confusion perhaps so if there is no fit then the the businesses may be better off outside of the conglomerate uh, situation So, the advantage of conglomerate uh, diversification is that there should be some area where it fits. It may be production or finance or marketing, but there should be something which enables some economies. Decision making may become, become slower due to longer review periods and complicated reporting systems. That's what I was saying about bureaucracy. If there is no fit if there's no strategic fit then the individual businesses may be better off outside of the conglomerate uh, configuration simply because the conglomerate uh, situation is generating a bureaucracy it takes it's slowing up decision-making um, it's worsening the position for the the companies within its uh, umbrella So, to summarize, conglomerate diversification is about having different types of businesses. They are there to make a profit, to contribute to the overall conglomerate. They don't necessarily fit together. But if they don't fit together, you have to ask, why are they there in the first place? What is the advantage? Would it not be better off uh, outside of the conglomerate uh, uh, umbrella and just kept as separate businesses and owned as separate businesses what's the advantage so even though they are separate and it doesn't fit our idea of concentric diversification there should be some fit there should be some advantage there should be some element of sharing sharing resources or sharing distribution or sharing something they should they should have something in common which is to the advantage of the conglomerate so we have two concepts here we have the conglomerate diversification and we have the concentric diversification concentric is looking for synergy it's looking for similarity in the business units in the uh, in that configuration conglomerate is not looking for similarity it's looking for profitability but there are issues involved in looking at that so we have two ideas and they are different that's all I want to do at the moment uh, that completes this class so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching <laughs>